Matthew chapter 16 in your Bible, we just read verses 13 through 20. Here in Matthew chapter 16, we find Jesus and his disciples and their journey, the Bible says, on their way to Caesarea Philippi. And as they're, as they're journeying, Jesus takes the opportunity in the verses that we just read to call their attention to the truth that he is the Messiah. We find in verse 14, we just read, Jesus asks his disciples, who are people saying that I am? You notice he's going to get to the disciples in a moment. But first he asks you know, all these crowds and, and the miracles that I perform, the people that you're interacting with that maybe I haven't had the chance to speak with, who are they saying that I am? Who am I? The disciples answer there in verse uh, 15 or 16. I'm sorry, skip back to verse 14. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So Jesus, some, some people think that maybe you're Jeremiah or you're, or you're Elijah or that you're John the Baptist who, who was just uh, persecuted and you're risen from the dead as Herod at the time thought who Jesus was or speculated that he could be. So they're saying that you're a prophet or they're saying that you're this Old Testament prophet or you're John the Baptist come to life. And then Jesus pauses and he looks at his disciples and asks them the question there in verse 15, but whom say ye that I am? Whom say ye that I am? Now, this is not the thought this morning, but I just want you to pause there. And for a second, I want to look at Peter's response there in verse uh, 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus receives the correct, divinely inspired response from Peter. Now, what's interesting, this is not the thought, but I, I want to make note of this. What's interesting is this now begins a turning point when you read the Gospels for Jesus' disciples. Now that God has taught them, God has shown them that he is the Messiah, they, you start to see them turn a corner where Jesus now starts to reveal to them his plan, which is what? Calvary, which is that he will die. That he, will be, that he will be resurrected. And you read now that the disciples, as he starts to unfold more of his plan here on earth to them, they sometimes it's a little overwhelming for them or they're a little confused. But here's what I want you to notice this morning, that Jesus, when he first called them to be disciples, did not reveal the whole plan to them. Once they came to the understanding that he was the Messiah, and they learned and grasped that truth, and they were growing in their walk with Christ, he then revealed more to them. The same holds true to you and me this morning, Christian. I think many of us, those that are saved and know Christ as our Savior, if when we trusted Christ, God showed us the whole map and the whole outline of the rest of our lives, we'd probably be a little bit overwhelmed. We'd probably be a little bit overwhelmed at all the things that we'd have to face, all the things that we'd have to go through, and, and all the things that would transpire. I know as a young teenager at 15 years old, when I put my faith in Jesus Christ, at that moment, if God showed me the whole plan for the rest of my life as a 15-year-old teenager, it would, a little, it would have been overwhelming, a little confusing. So it's interesting how Jesus works, and what we can take out of that thought this morning is this, just continue to grow in faith. Continue in your walk with Christ, and as you do, in a loving, merciful, patient way, God will reveal more and will show you and will point the way that you're supposed to go in your life. Stop trying to figure it all out. Stop trying to map it all out at once, and instead, just focus on what Christ is trying to teach you here and now today, and grow in faith, and grow in your walk, and let the Lord lead you, and in his love and mercy, he will. But here's the message this morning, and what I want to stop and think about for just a few moments and ask ourselves this question that Jesus asked Peter and his disciples. Who do you say that I am? Can I phrase it in our vernacular is, who is Jesus? <laughs> who is Jesus to you this morning? Who is Jesus? How you answer that question will determine the outcome of your life. How you answer that question this morning, who is Jesus, will dictate the rest of your life. You see, the problem is that as much as we may try and as much as this world may try or as much as even as Christians we may try to escape Jesus, we try to run from him, we try to flee religion and Christianity and church, yet there he is. <laughs> 
continuing to show up in our lives, continuing to show up time and time again through people or circumstances we find face to face with Jesus as much as we may try to run away. We see in our world our greatest philosophers write about him, our greatest historians teach and write about him, our greatest poems and plays that you read throughout history are about Jesus Christ, even architecture that is constructed in a pattern of Jesus Christ and his ministry on earth. Music and art in our world, much has to do with Jesus. So the bottom line is, as much as we may try, and even sometimes as Christians, to escape Jesus Christ, there is no escaping. He's there. And so, by way of introduction, I ask you this morning this very simple but yet complex question that I want you to answer in the quietness of your own mind and heart is who do you say that I am? Not me, Jesus. Who is Jesus Christ to you? As I mentioned, how you answer that question will dictate the rest of your life. How you answer that question this morning, Christian, could be a good read of where you are in your spiritual health, in your walk with Christ. Now I could, as I read this questions and I study this passage, to be honest with you, we could sit here and, <laughs> and talk about this from the Bible for the next two years about who is Jesus and verses about Jesus. And it almost became the point where it's a little overwhelming, where is this what the Lord has for us? But the Lord kept leading me back to this passage, and so for a few moments, I want to answer that question through the scripture. I want you, as we're looking through and looking at these verses and understanding the truth this morning, I want you to keep that question on the forefront of your mind and heart, and in all honesty and sincerity of your heart, who is Jesus Christ to you? Is he everything? Some of you might say, he's everything. He's my savior. Some of you may say, I don't have it all figured out yet. To some of you, maybe it's just a game or a cliche, or it's just something I'm still, I don't understand what's going on, or I don't know where you're at this morning in your spiritual journey, in your, in your walk, in your faith, but I ask you to evaluate it this morning. I'm not going to come around and keep score. I'm not going to make you put an answer on a note card and collect it and judge you, but no, between you and the Holy Spirit this morning, you answer that question. Who is Jesus? Can I share to you this? Number one, to lay the foundation here this morning and stick with me because we're going somewhere. Number one, we can't begin to answer this question without first addressing this, that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, unfortunately, this fact of the faith has been questioned and doubted by unbelievers, false religions, and by numerous amounts of religious leaders. Many people call him just a prophet. Many people just call him a servant, but the scriptures clearly teach that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God in human form. As Christmas comes up, Emmanuel, God with us. And Christian, whether you've been saved for years or whether you're a new believer, you've got to be very careful to not get caught up in the doctrines and teachings of churches and leaders this day that say, oh, Jesus was just another man. Jesus was just a good guy, just a good servant, just like Muhammad and Buddha and all these guys. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, sent down to us in human form that we study and that we put our faith and our, and our trust in this morning. He is the Son of God. Genesis 3.15, why, how, what do scriptures tell us? And we could do a whole Bible study again on this, but I just want to lay the foundation real quickly. Genesis 3.15 prophesies that The seed of woman will bruise the head of Satan. Saying the Messiah will come and will bruise the head of Satan in Genesis chapter 3. This prophecy is fulfilled in John 19, 17 through 18 when Jesus hangs on the cross. See, when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, he was bringing redemption to all of humanity and giving a way to escape from the curse that the serpent deceived Eve into. One of many prophecies that Jesus fulfilled, proving that he is the Son of God. Isaiah chapter 7 in the Old Testament teaches us that the Messiah, the Son of God, will be born of a virgin. Matthew chapter 1, we see that fulfilled. Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, Mary. He was resurrected from the dead, Psalm 49, 15 prophesies. And we see that fulfilled in Matthew 28 in all the Gospels. And we celebrate on Easter Sunday when Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead. We notice all throughout the Gospels, Jesus is the Son of God because of his God-likeness. It's natural for a son to resemble his father. And sometimes I think about that with my son, and I'm like, oh, sorry. (laughs) But now with Jesus, 
He resembles his father, his God-likeness, and the miracles that he did and the power that he portrayed. I could go on and on this morning, but we can't answer this question without first addressing this and understanding that Jesus Christ is not just a man. He's not just a teacher. He's not just another person in the history books. He is the Son of God. One of my favorite quotes on this matter before we move on, C.S. Lewis, in a book called Mere Christianity, says this. I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him, talking about Jesus Christ. They say, I'm, I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says that he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. But you must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. But you can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon. Or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. The thought is this this morning. Jesus Christ, you either are one way or the other. Either he, he I see as who has said he's a raving lunatic going around saying he's the son of God, or he really truly is the son of God. And can I testify to you this morning, just by way of my life, and many of you could do the same, Jesus Christ has changed my life, he's changed my marriage, he's changed my family, he's changed my perspective about this world for the better, and indeed I can tell you this morning, he indeed is the son of God, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody teach you otherwise. Be careful what you listen to on television. Be careful what books you read because this is a problem in our churches today. He's just somebody, somebody else, another history figure. No, Jesus is the Son of God. Now, we're going to get more applicable here in a moment, but we could not continue with this thought of answering that question until we first address that. Jesus is the Son of God. But Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, if you want to turn there, you can. Isaiah chapter 9. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? We know, before we go further into answering this question, the foundation in which we must lay that he is the Son of God. But Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says this, For unto us a child is born, Isaiah 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And then notice this, I have underlined in my Bible, the Prince of Peace. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but number two this morning, Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Now he's the Prince of Peace because of his sacrifice, he lets us have peace with God. But as you trust him and you become, he becomes your savior, even so more in your life, because can we be honest this morning, we live in a world that's pretty unpeaceful. <laughs> we live in a world that's, and you look at your average home, and you look at the schools, and you look at the workplace, and you look at your average person going through day-to-day -day life, and what are they seeking in their life? What are they trying to find in their life? Peace. They're trying to find peace and happiness in their life. And they may try to find it in all the different things of this world. They may try to find it in success. They may try to find it in money. They may say, hey, let's keep the marriage good. And then the kids are older and base their whole life and family, or, uh, their life around their family and find peace in those things. But can I tell you this morning, I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know what you're going through. But there's only one person, there's only one way where you can find true peace in your life. And that is through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Who is Jesus? He's the Son of God, but he's the author and the Prince of Peace. And this morning, whatever you're going through, whatever fear that you're facing, whatever circumstances the girls were just singing about a few moments ago seems to overwhelm and surround you, you don't see a way through, can I tell you this morning, you can find peace in a relationship with Jesus Christ. John 16, says this, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I don't know what you're going through, what's causing your heart and soul unrest this morning. But I do know that if you decide 
to pursue Jesus Christ, to seek his face, to get in his word, to claim his promises, you can find a peace that the Bible talks about that passeth all understanding. And I want nothing more. I, I, what I want, one of the greatest things I want for all of you here this morning is to have peace and experience peace in your life. And I can tell you there's only one way to do that, by building your life on a foundation of Jesus Christ and having a relationship with him. You will find peace no other way. Celebrities may try to find peace in, in drugs and alcohol. They might try to find peace in success and big houses and fame. But it's all for naught. It's all in vain, the book of Ecclesiastes says. True peace can only be found in Jesus Christ. And so I ask you this morning, where are you at in your life? And if you're at a place of unrest, if you're at a place of difficulty, are you seeking Christ? Do you have a relationship with him? Are you pursuing Jesus? Are you reading his word? Are you claiming his promises? Are you letting him become real in your life? This last week, a man in our church, he's not here this morning, Dom invited me to go to a luncheon with several pastors in Connecticut. So me and Brother Brandon went to check it out, and there were maybe 15 or 16 men there, good men. And I sat next to a gentleman, he wasn't a pastor, but he began to tell me his testimony. And he began to say, man, I had a lot of, I, I, I was an attorney, made a lot of money, very successful but I was having trouble in my marriage. my marriage. My older son, who was married, was having trouble in his marriage. We were struggling. Man, we had everything there was in this world. We had the big house. We had the career. We had the money. But we were missing something. Our marriages were falling apart. Not only mine, but my son's. So one day, someone introduced him to church, invited him to church, and he was very skeptical about it. He didn't want to jump in. He, you hear about Christianity, you hear about God, but you think it's all made up, it's all farce, it's all fairy tale. That, that can't help me, that can't impact me. And he looked at me across the table, and he got a little emotional, and he said, Zach, but then when I went to church, and I went to a group, and I learned about Jesus Christ, I found true peace in my life. Everything changed. And by it, my son, who I never thought in a million years would ever step foot in a church, came, and he trusted Christ, and he was introduced to peace, and God worked in his life. And the moral of the story is this, Jesus Christ will change your life for the better. He will give you peace if you let him. And sometimes as Christians, we need to be reminded of that. We need to be shaken up because we know that truth. But then we go throughout life, yeah, I know Jesus is there. I know I'm saved. I know i got to read my Bible. I, I know this. But then we just go throughout our week, and I'm guilty of it. We get busy in our jobs. We get busy in work. We get busy in our families. And our Bibles sit on our, sit on our shelf collecting dust. And we get overwhelmed, and we get stressed out, and we get a phone call, and we get discouraged, and, and we try to figure things out. And then we're on our phones Googling things. The worst thing for me, right? Googling things. At the end of the day, the Holy Spirit reminds me, Zach, stop panicking, stop worrying. You know the truth. You're not going to find peace in Google. You're not going to find peace in your career. You're going to find peace one way, and that's through my son, Jesus Christ, right here in my word. And it reminds me, yeah, I'm not going to have it all figured out, but run back to the basics and read the Bible and pursue God and know him and pray and cast your burden upon the Lord. And let him see you through. Who is Jesus Christ? He's the Son of God. Who is Jesus Christ? He's the Prince of Peace. And I don't know what's going on in your home or your household this morning, but Jesus Christ can bring peace. Jesus Christ can bring peace. Who is Jesus? Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Would you turn to Romans chapter 11 quickly this morning? I could list two, three hundred things. We're only going to do... Four. <laughs> Romans chapter 11, verse 26. Who is Jesus? Are you thinking about that this morning? Who is Jesus to you? Is it a game? Is it a routine? Is it a ritual? Is he everything? Is he your savior? Is, are you pursuing him? Do you know him? Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Number three, Romans chapter 11, verse 26 says this. And so all Israel shall be saved. Romans 11, verse 26. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. There shall come out of Zion, notice this, the deliverer, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Who is Jesus Christ? He's the Son of God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the ultimate deliverer. Yes, he delivered us from death and the grave through his sacrifice. We can find peace with God and eternal life. But this morning, do you understand that Jesus also has the power to deliver us from the snares of this world and the devil? 
and I always beat this drum because I don't want to be labeled as some crazy conspiracy theorist. <laughs> but I tell you this morning, and I bring your attention to this, some Sundays, as many times as, as the thought comes up and the Holy Spirit leads, and that's this. The devil and his forces are very real. There is true darkness and evil in this world. And they're at work. And they're hard at work. And all it takes is to go on the internet or walk, turn on the TV for 10, 15 minutes and to see things and to watch these videos that are going on in our world today and to realize that we're at a time where Satan and these spiritual forces, they're not even trying to hide it. It's just blatant. I watch videos on, on Twitter, I'm scrolling through, things that they're bringing elementary age kids to. People that they're bringing into these schools to perform in front of our kids. I'm not talking in some country far away. Right here in the United States, craziness, evil. Satan's hard at work, and he's not just hard at work. And, and again, I say this because of where I'm at in my stage of life, and I'm sure many of you can relate. But he's not just here to destroy me and my wife and our marriage, though he wants to do that. But he's out to destroy my son Luke and my son Aaron coming in March. And he's out to destroy your kids and your grandkids too. And he'll do anything that he can to influence them. He'll do anything he can to deceive them, to destroy them. He'll do anything he can to split up his mom and dad, to discourage us. Why? Because spiritual warfare is a real thing. And this morning, can I remind you that you're not going to win that war against darkness and against the devil and against Satan and against the forces in this world on your own. But I promise you, you can and you will win when you have the deliverer by your side. When you have Jesus Christ next to you, when you cling to him, when you cling to his word, when you pursue him, he can deliver you. He can give you victory against the devil and this world and their influences. And yes, they're strong. And yes, they beat their drums. And yes, they, they push their agendas. But greater is he, as I just read, that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus Christ will give us the victory. So cling to him, parent. Cling to him, grandparent. Cling to him, husband. Cling to him, wife. Cling to him, teenager. Cling to him wherever you're at in your life. Cling to Jesus Christ. And claim the victory that he's intended for you to have in your life. You need a deliverer to win the spiritual warfare that goes on in this world. Can we be honest this morning? You need a deliverer to deliver you from yourself. Because not only in our life do we face the spiritual warfare of the, of the things that go on in this world, but man, the Bible talks about our flesh, our pride. You see, when you accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. You are a new man. You are a new creature, the Bible says. But just as much as the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, and the new man and new creature lives inside of you, unfortunately, the old man in the flesh is still there as well. And there's a constant war every single day against the spirit and against the flesh. We read Paul, and we've studied this before, and we've talked about spiritual warfare. But Paul gives us a great example in Romans when he says, I, I know the things that I'm supposed to do, but I don't do them. <laughs> and that's many of us. We know the things we're supposed to do. We know we're supposed to read our Bible. We know we're supposed to be in church. We know we're supposed to pray. We know we're supposed to seek God's face. We know we're not supposed to worry but trust him. But yet, we do the opposite. And I'm not going to have victory over my flesh on my own. <laughs> I need a deliverer. I need the Holy Spirit that lives inside me to humble myself and to surrender and to yield to the Holy Spirit every day and say, Lord, help me to walk in your spirit. Help me to humble myself. Help me not to give in to my pride and to my greed and to my ego and to whatever it is that you're struggling with this morning. Jesus Christ can deliver you from it if you yield to him and you let him. The flesh is a very, very real thing. You know, oftentimes our worst, as I said, our worst enemy is ourselves. Our worst enemy is our minds. What we dwell and what we think. And many times I'm staying there, laying in my bed, trying to fall asleep. And man, I, all of us, I'm sure, can attest, right? Let's just be honest this morning. We're not here to put on a show, act like we all have it all together, right? Let's just, let's just be honest. We've all been there where worry just goes through our minds, where fears just go through our minds, where anxiety and depression and stress and discouragement, and we're, we're, we're thinking about things coming up in our week. We're thinking about situations that we're facing, 
and we get down and we feel hopeless and we feel discouraged and your mind is your greatest enemy. And oftentimes it's in those places where I need the Holy Spirit to remind me, Zach, stop dwelling and stop thinking and stop calculating things in your own power and instead cast your burden upon the Lord. Instead, when you're there at night and you're falling asleep and worry and fear and anxiety surround your mind and heart, when those times come, why don't you pause? Say, Lord, I'm coming to you now because I don't want to think those thoughts. I'm coming to you, Lord. I'm casting my burden upon you. Holy Spirit, fill me. Teach me what it means to trust you. Teach me what it means to have faith in you. Help me to know that, that you've brought me here for such a time as this and you're in control in my life. Help me to trust you, Lord. Help me to lean on you. Deliver me from my own flesh and my own pride and my own addiction and my own sin and my own struggle and give me the victory through your Holy Spirit. I promise you, if you come to the Lord humble and surrendered and you pray that simple prayer with sincerity, sincerity of your heart, God will work in your life and give you victory over your own thoughts. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Jesus Christ is not just the Prince of Peace, but He's the ultimate deliverer. And let's be honest this morning, every single one of us need to be delivered from something. Whether it's sin, whether it's addiction, whether it's a situation we're going through, I don't know what it is, but you do this morning. And you have a deliverer that, if you're saved in your heart and mind right now, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and he wants to help you, but you need to let him. You need to let him. Who is Jesus Christ? But who do you say that I am, Peter? Well, I study scripture and I know that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. I study scripture and I know that Jesus Christ indeed is the Prince of Peace. I know he is the ultimate deliverer. But I notice this as well, and you don't have to turn here for sake of time, John chapter 11, but Jesus Christ is, a, is the friend like no other. Jesus Christ is the friend like no other. Hey, listen, in my life and in your life, men have failed me, but Jesus never. People have failed me. People have disappointed me. Friends have stabbed me in the back. I've probably done the same, but can I tell you this morning, Jesus never fails. He is the friend like no other. I love what the hymn says, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Notice this, oh what peace we often forfeit, oh what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble everywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Is that you this morning? Cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise or forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised that with all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. This morning can I tell you that Jesus Christ, he is the Son of God. He is the creator of this world. He brings true peace. He's the prince of peace through his sacrifice on Calvary. He's the ultimate deliverer. He's a great, big, vast God, but he's also a friend like no other. And I'm not talking about some imaginary friend that you just talked to. No, 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 no. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Man, the more you read your Bible, the more you pray, the more you seek his face, the more you trust him, the more real Jesus Christ becomes in your life. You see, to me, I have a long way to go, but Jesus Christ is real to me. Many of you this morning, Jesus Christ is real to you. Why? Because you seek him. And can I plead with you this morning? Men are going to fail you. People are going to let you down. That's this human sin curse nature world that we live in but jesus christ will never fail you and whatever's overwhelming you this morning whatever burdens on your back whatever you're struggling with whatever hopeless situation that you're in take it to the lord in prayer jesus christ is a friend like no other he loves you he knows you he has you here for a reason i've told you this many times he's pursuing you in your life because he loves you he's going after you because he wants to change you he wants to make you more like him he wants to have a relationship with you 
And that's why it's no accident this morning that you got our mailer in the mail seven months ago. By the way, three days ago was seven months of our church's history. There's no accident that you saw us on Facebook. There's no accident that you saw us in the newspaper. There's no accident your friend told us about you. You're here for a reason, and that's because Jesus Christ loves you and knows you and wants to work in your life and be a friend like no other friend you've ever had. Who is Jesus to you this morning? Brandon, get Catherine for me. Who is Jesus Christ to you this morning? I can tell you this, he is the Son of God. I can tell you this, he is the Prince of Peace. I can tell you this, he is the ultimate deliverer. And I can tell you this, he is a friend like no other. Now you answer that question for yourself this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ... If you've never put your faith and trust in him, maybe you've been coming to church for several weeks now, months now, but you've never taken that step of faith where you said, Lord, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to jump in. I'm asking you to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sin. I want to be your child. I want you to save me. I want to be a Christian today. I'm putting my faith in you. Can I plead with you today? Let the Holy Spirit work in your heart, in your life, in your mind. Don't put that back. Don't let pride be the reason that you don't accept Jesus Christ. I promise you, if you're here this morning, you've never made that decision, we're not going to be judging you about it. We're going to be rejoicing with you about it if you make that decision today. But maybe you're here this morning and you say, I am saved, Pastor. I've been saved for a long time, or I've been saved for a few months, but to be honest with you, I've gotten away from my friend like no other. I've gotten away from my deliverer. I've gotten away from the Prince of Peace or the Son of God. Seek Him. Run back to Him. Have a relationship with Him. Read your Bible with your families. Husbands, read your Bible with your, with your wife and your kids. Husband and wives, pray together. Individuals, seek the Lord. Have a daily devotion. Get to know God and let Him manifest Himself in your life. Who is Jesus Christ to you? He's a friend like no other. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the ultimate deliverer. He's the Son of God. And by the way, I could go on and on and on and on if I wanted to, <laughs> but we won't. With who is Jesus? Well, he's the second Adam. He's the advocate. He's the agent of days. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the beginning of the creation of God. He's the only begotten of the Father. He's the bread of life. He's the bright and morning star. He's the chosen. He's the head of the church. He's the cornerstone. He's the counselor. He's the first fruits from the dead. He's the high priest. He's the holy one of God. He's the mediator. He's the teacher. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Listen this morning. He's what it's all about, Jesus Christ. And so make him the preeminence in your life this morning. Would you do that?